Hey there! This video is going to be a deep dive technical comparison between the new Blackmagic 6K full frame and the Sony FX3. Before we get into it, I just had to have a huge thank you to BH Photo who lent me the 6K full frame to test review and make videos like this for all of you. So if you're looking to pick up some camera gear, I recommend you check out BH Photo. There are links down in the description for both the FX3 and the 6K full frame and all the gear that I use on a regular basis. So Big thank you to BH Photo. Now, this video is not sponsored by BH Photo, but it is sponsored by Storyblocks, and more on that later. So, let's jump right into it and talk about image quality. So, let me give you a baseline and explain how I did some of these comparisons. So, first of all, I used my Sigma Art 28mm EF f1.4 lens with both cameras. And to do that, I used my Sigma MC11 and MC21 adapters to adapt them to the E and L mounts that are on these cameras. So, there was no difference in the lens that I used, so I completely eliminated that variable. Now, for the Blackmagic 6K full frame, I shot everything in B-RAW 8 to 1 in 6K DCI at the base ISO of 400 in the film setting. Now, the Sony FX3, I shot in the highest mode I could record internally, which is the XAVC SI. And I did that in DCI 4K, so it would match, match the aspect ratio of the 6K full frame. I shot that at the base ISO of 800 in S-Log3. Now, I could have recorded ProRes RAW externally from the FX3 into something like an Ninja V, but for this test and this video, I wanted to record everything internally in both of these cameras. If you're curious about the ProRes RAW and how it compares with the internal compressed codecs in the FX3 and how to set up and use it, I made a couple of videos about that and I'll leave those videos linked down below. So one big difference between these two cameras is, of course, the resolution. The 6K full frame has a 6K sensor, and the FX3 has a 4.2K sensor, which it oversamples to 4K in either UHD or DCI with the full width. If you're curious about how that works, I explained that in one of the raw videos that I just previously mentioned. Now, so for these examples, I graded both clips by hand, and I just adjusted the contrast and saturation to match as best as possible between the two clips. I didn't adjust any colors though. Now, both cameras were set to their sunny setting. And one thing that's interesting if you're not familiar with Blackmagic cameras is that when you set it to the sunny white balance setting, it actually adds a plus 10 magenta shift built in. But I just set them to sunny and set them the same and I didn't adjust any colors so you could see the differences in the colors. All right, so taking a look at these examples, I wanted to try to capture as many colors as I possibly could. It is late fall here in North Carolina, but I did my best. And I just wanted you to just be able to see any differences in colors. Now, for me personally, I slightly prefer the colors out of the Blackmagic 6K full frame. I've shot a lot in the FX3, so it's really cool to see the colors and how they're different. And you can definitely see that in this example here with the leaves. There's definitely just different colors going on. Both are good, but like usual colors are personal preference. In terms of dynamic range, taking a look at the shot of my car, they're pretty similar. Uh, I think they have a similar amount of dynamic range. There are gonna be some slight differences, which we'll get into a little bit later on in this video. And lastly, the shot of me kind of in the shade here, again, talking about dynamic range, the shadows fairly similar, the highlights fairly similar. So overall, I would say these cameras have pretty similar image quality and they both produce really nice images, very similar dynamic range and just a little bit of color difference. And one thing that plays into a big part of how these two cameras work are their dual base ISO. So the 6K full frame has a dual base ISO of 400 and 3200, whereas in the FX3, it's 812,800. So that's gonna be a big part of the discussion and comparing these cameras. So let's do some pixel peeping. And first of all, we'll compare these two cameras at their base ISOs of 400 and 800 respectively. So the 6K full frame is sharper, and this is not a surprise because it's 6K versus the 4.2K oversampled 4K. But the FX3 is less noisy, even though the FX3 is at a higher ISO. Now, taking a look at the second base ISO of both cameras, 3200 and 12,800. Again, like before, the 6K full frame is sharper, but the FX3 is definitely less noisy, even though it's at a much higher ISO. Now, there's a couple of things at play here. Like I said, the dual base ISOs, but obviously these cameras have very different sensors. In addition to that, we're recording B-RAW in the 6K full frame versus in an internal compressed codec, which has noise reduction, and you can't control that on the FX3. I do want to talk about Moray or aliasing for a second here, and the reason for that is that the Blackmagic 6K full frame has an optical low-pass filter in it, but I noticed Moray in one of the shots that I already showed you. And this is interesting to me because I own the FX3, I've used it for years, and I only get Moray every once in a while, and so I was a little bit surprised that I found some more in one of the shots here. And it was also weird that it was on my t-shirt in the shot outside. And it's not a busy or stripey pattern, which is where you more commonly see it. So let me zoom in here because it's a little bit harder to see. And 
You can see it on my shirt that there is some worry going on. And I wasn't specifically testing for this, but I just wanted to share with this result with you. So I do also notice in, when I zoom in on the shot here that the Blackmagic is a lot sharper than the FX3. And I don't know if that was a difference of focus or the fact that there's a higher resolution I was cropping in 250%. But either way, I was getting more A, so it would be something I'd be aware of and probably would require some further testing to see, you know, in what situations you were getting it. But uh, the optical low pass filter that's in this camera doesn't take care of all of it. Now, before we get on talking about low light and dynamic range, I need to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, which is Storyblocks. Storyblocks has unlimited downloads of royalty free professional content for one predictable subscription cost. Say goodbye to expensive paperclip pricing. The first thing you might think of with Storyblocks is stock footage, and that's definitely true. Now, if you're working on a project, you need a clip of something that you don't have. Maybe you're looking for some cinematic drone footage, fall foliage, something funny, a cute dog, aerials of your favorite city, some fried chicken, or <laughs> a chicken, some friends eating dinner, a volcano, well, you get it. You can find footage for just about anything. And once you have your footage, you can celebrate since you can finish your project. You can choose to download in HD or 4K and specify your frame rate. In addition to stock footage, you can download animated backgrounds, templates for After Effects, Premiere Pro and Apple Motion, royalty-free music, which is what you're listening to right now, sound effects, stock photos, and more. Anything you download with Storyblocks is 100% royalty-free and you can use it with any of your projects. You can choose a monthly or annual plan with no hidden fees and you don't need scientists to explain this to you. Stock footage is also just so much fun to use. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head over to storyblocks.com slash Josh Satin. Thank you to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Next, let's talk about low light. So like I said earlier, the dual bases of the 6K full frame are 400 and 3200, but the second gain stage actually kicks in at 1250. And you can see this and the image cleaning up going from 1000 to 1250. And you don't see this cleaning up going from 2,500 to 3,200, but at 400 and 3,200, we'll give you the best dynamic range in terms of the balance of the highlights and shadows. I went to the, into this in more depth in my previous video about the 6K full frame versus the 6K G2. I'll leave that video linked down below if you wanna check that out. So of course, Sony, most of you know, has a dual base ISO of 812,800. And so as we look through the ISO range, You'll see that the FX3 has less noise at every single ISO, but the Blackmagic is definitely sharper, like we said before, because it has that 6K resolution versus the 4.2K oversampled 4K. And really there's no surprise here because the FX3 is known for its high ISO performance. All right, let's talk about dynamic range. And this is a bit tricky since these cameras have different base ISOs. So first of all, let's take a look at two examples to see what's going on. And for these examples, I expose for the highlights and make sure I don't clip the highlights. And then I grade them to look pretty similar and take a look in the shadows and see what's going on. So the outdoor example, which you already just saw, looks very similar here. I think the shadows look maybe slightly better on the Black Magic, and the highlights look to be slightly better on the FX3. At first glance, you may not notice, but if you stare long enough, you probably see a little bit of a difference, maybe not coming through on YouTube. Now, the indoor example, which is me in a dark room next to a bright window, similar to the outside test, but maybe a bit easier to see here. The shadows on the Black Magic look way cleaner, but the highlights look better on the FX3, and you can see that on the leaves of the trees out behind me outside the window. Now, when we were looking at some of the earlier examples, they looked like they had a similar amount of dynamic range. But what we just saw here with the test inside me next to a bright window is that it really wasn't surprising to me that they performed differently in the highlights and the shadows, again, because of that different base ISOs that these two cameras have. Now, generally speaking, if you have a higher ISO and still exposed properly, you will preserve more highlight information. And if you have a lower ISO and you expose properly, you will preserve more shadow information. Now, I made a video about ISO and shooting purposely not at the base ISO for shifting dynamic range. So if you're interested in how that works, I'll leave that video link down below too. So let's verify this with a latitude or push-pull test. Now, for the overexposure test, both cameras look very similar here, and they're good up to about four stops over with, I'd say, a slight color shift on the Blackmagic at four stops over, and then they break at five stops. But the FX3 seems to be holding color better in those four and five stop overexposures. So I'd probably give a slight advantage to the FX3 in the highlights, which is what we expected from looking at those other examples. So take a look at the underexposure test. Here, the noise looks very similar and they're pretty good till two stops under. At three and four stops under, I think the Black Magic looks a little bit cleaner and they're both pretty terrible at five stops under, which is completely expected with these cameras. 
Overall, the dynamic range is pretty similar with the FX3 being a little better in the highlights and the Black Magic being a little bit better in the shadows. And like I said, I think this has a lot to do with the different base ISOs with the higher base being saving some more highlight information, the lower base saving a little bit more shadow information. So at the time of recording this, I haven't seen Cine D or Gerald Undon who generally test the actual calculated number of stops of dynamic range. So I'll be curious to see what that number is when, they, when and if they get around to it. So when I tested the 6K full frame versus the 6K G2, the dynamic range looked very similar on those two cameras. And I think the 6K G2 and 6K Pro tested to have slightly less dynamic range than the FX3 by Cine D and Gerald Dunn and, and those guys. But either way, solid performance by both cameras in terms of the dynamic range. In terms of rolling shutter, the FX3 is clearly better here, and that was definitely expected. Uh, this was done in the 6K DCI, and if you shoot in the 6K open gate, it has even worse rolling shutter performance. So if rolling shutter is important to you, the FX3 definitely performs better. In terms of battery life, I didn't test the runtime of the FX3, but I've owned that camera for a long time, and I probably tested at some point in the past. But in the 6K full frame with the included Blackmagic battery, I got one hour and 14 minutes, which, is okay, but you're gonna get much longer run times, probably around two hours or so on the FX3. In terms of stabilization and autofocus, well, we don't have to test those because the Blackmagic doesn't have stabilization or autofocus. Now the 6K full frame does have a single uh, one touch autofocus, but it doesn't have continuous autofocus. In terms of stills, which I don't really talk about photography on the channel, but you can take photos on both of these cameras. Now, although you can take photos in the Blackmagic, it produces a B-RAW file and you can't preview the image on the camera and it is a little bit harder of a workflow. And of course you don't have the same autofocus that you have in the FX3. Now the Blackmagic does have higher megapixels because it has a 6K sensor, but the autofocus and workflow is definitely a huge advantage for the FX3. And I actually use the FX3 for photos and thumbnails and stuff like that on a regular basis. So. Again, you can take photos on the Blackmagic, but it's definitely a lot easier to do on the FX3. Next, let's talk about resolutions and aspect ratios. So the 6K full frame, of course, shoots 6K, but it doesn't shoot a full width UHD, which is something I wish it did. That's something that is in the FX3 and I use on a regular basis. So the 6K full frame shoots in a lot of different aspect ratios and resolutions. Of course, one of the headline features is the 6K open gate and the 6x5 anamorphic. Also shoots in 6K DCI and 6K 2.4 to 1 and all the other things going on here. Now, these are all in B-RAW. So if it has less than 6K resolution, what's going on here is it's cropping into the sensor because it's gonna give a one-to-one -one readout for RAW. Now the FX3 can shoot full width UHD and DCI by oversampling from a 4.2K sensor. If you're curious how that works, check out my RAW video about the FX3 for a full explanation. Now the FX3 can't shoot cropped 4K, but it can shoot full width 1080p and cropped 1080p. So depending on what you need, there are some differences here, but I think one huge advantage is the fact that the 6K full frame shoots an open gate. In terms of codecs, of course the FX3 can shoot an external 12-bit ProRes RAW to something like an Atomos Ninja V, but in terms of internal codecs, the Blackmagic can shoot B-RAW. The FX3 can shoot 10-bit compressed codecs in a few different flavors. We have the XAVC SI, which is an all intra H.264, XAVC S, which is a long op H.264, and XAVC HS, which is a long op H.265. So a few more options, but the Blackmagic gives you that internal raw recording and the FX3 gives you internal compressed codecs. Bunch of differences in terms of the higher frame rates. Now the 6K full frame when you're shooting an open gate and the 6x5 anamorphic, you can shoot 30 frames per second or 36 frames per second in off speed. In 6K DCI, you can shoot 30 frames per second or 48 frames per second in off speed. And in 6K 2.4 to 1, you can shoot 60 frames per second in both regular and off speed. Now the FX3 has a lot better options in terms of higher frame rates. It can shoot full frame up to 4K 60 and 4K 120 with a 10% crop. So if you're looking for higher frame rate stuff, the FX3 is definitely gonna be a better choice for you. In terms of picture profiles, the Blackmagic has three different options. You have video, which is the full colored in Rex 709 look. You have extended video, which is kind of in between. And then you have film, which is the log profile, which is what I recommend shooting in to give you the most dynamic range and flexibility and grading and what I did all of my test footage in. Now the FX3 can shoot, of course, in S-Log3 to give you the most dynamic range and flexibility in post. But there are a lot of different options in the FX3, including profiles like s Tone, and you can customize all the picture profiles. Now, both of these cameras, you can load custom LUTs into them, which is super handy, and I'm glad you can do that in both of these cameras. In terms of the HDMI output, the FX3 can output in 4K and in RAW, 
and the black magic can only output in 1080p so that is something to consider if you wanted to record externally or you needed a higher resolution for streaming or something like that in terms of sensor size both of these cameras have a full frame three by two aspect ratio sensor but like I said before, the 6K full frame, you can record an open gate, which records the full three by two sensor in video, whereas the FX3, you cannot do that. But if you are doing photography, you can take advantage of the full sensor. So that's kind of a big difference between these two cameras, but the sensor size is essentially the same. In terms of the mounts, the Blackmagic has an L mount and the Sony has an E mount. There are lots of different lens options for both. Of course, E-mount having more options than L, but you can use adapters, like I said before. And the fact that they're both mirrorless mounts, you can use things, like I said, the MC-11 and MC-21. So you can adapt vintage lenses, cinema lenses, and of course, EF lenses, which is what I was doing for all those tests. Next, let's talk about body design, ergonomics, and all the physical stuff with these two cameras. Of course, there's a big difference in size, as you could clearly see here. The Blackmagic is a lot larger. It also, is very plasticky and I, the build quality is not nearly as good as it is on the FX3, but let's break this down and show you some of the differences between these two cameras besides the size. So first of all is the screens. The Blackmagic has this ginormous, big tilty screen, but it does not flip out so you can't see yourself or hold it at different angles. Now, for someone like myself, I do love the big screen on here. You get used to it really, really quickly. And for most things, you really don't even need a monitor because the screen's so big. One thing I have to say just in terms of usability is if you're shooting handheld and you're trying to press against your chest, it's kind of hard to do that to get a, a stable shot and also to be able to see the screen at the same time. So I wish this had some more flexibility in terms of how it flips around. But if you are, you know, it's on a tripod or something like that, this screen is awesome. It's very bright and it, you can use it for critical focus and exposure and it's just awesome. Now the FX3 screen is absolutely terrible and I complain about Sony screens all the time, but it does have more flexibility in that you can flip it out so you can film yourself with it. So if you're a content creator, you're filming yourself or you just has it, have it at a weird angle, or if you're rigging this up and you're putting stuff behind the camera, then you have a way to pull the screen out to, uh, to see that. Also, I do like how you can fold it up and the screen is protected for traveling. So this screen is very small, hard to see outside, doesn't have good resolution, but it does flip out. So it's a little bit more flexible and versatile in, in that situation. Now, neither of these cameras have built-in ND filters, and that's just something you have to deal with. That's something they took out from the 6K Pro. In terms of power inputs, they of course have batteries, but in terms of getting power into the camera, there is a two pin 12 volt connector here. Now Blackmagic does provide the DC adapter when you purchase this, but it is a specific adapter and connection that you have to use. Now, what I do love about the FX3 is it has USB-C power delivery. So as long as you have a power brick or a V-mount battery or something like that, that's got enough juice to, to run this, this is a lot more flexible in my opinion. They both have full-size HDMI ports, which I absolutely love and is very handy. In terms of audio, the Blackmagic has two mini XLR ports and a 3.5, and these are both phantom powered and provides pretty clean audio. Now the FX3 built in only has the one 3.5 millimeter jack, but it comes with the XLR top handle, which provides two full-size XLR inputs and 3.5, so you can run four channels of audio. So they both have professional audio built in, or of course with the top handle, so very easy and, and, and nice to have that in both of these cameras. Both of these cameras have fans on them, so it's great because they don't overheat. I absolutely love that. Super important for video cameras to have fans, in my opinion. I'm so sick of overheating. In terms of mounting these cameras, I love the fact that the Blackmagic has two quarter 20s on it, so when you mount a tripod plate here, it doesn't twist. I wish all cameras had that. The FX3 only has one on the bottom here. Another thing is that the Blackmagic has an optional EVF, so you can buy that from Blackmagic and you take it off and it attaches, you take off this cover here and it attaches right here. There's no option for a, you know, external EVF on the FX3, so that is really, really cool. Now, the other thing is just the mounting points all over the cameras. So the Blackmagic has the one up here, which I think a lot of people just put a cold shoe on, so they can put a mic or something like that on here. Now the FX3 does have a hot shoe here, which you can mount things to, but also has quarter 20s all over the camera. So a lot more mounting options for uh, the FX3. In terms of the menus and the usability of this camera, I think anyone that's used a Blackmagic camera before knows how awesome the menus are in this camera. 
They're just super easy to navigate, super clear to touch what you need and very straightforward and just not complicated. But in addition to the awesome menus, it does have a lot of usability that's really focused towards filmmakers and videographers. You have things like shutter angle, you have false color, you also have just better exposure tools and all the stuff that you'd be looking for with a video camera. So this is a really nice camera to use in terms of just the operation of the camera. Now the FX3, in my opinion, should have things like shutter angle and false color and better exposure tools besides a histogram because this is labeled a cinema camera. But if you are behind the camera and working the camera for a long period of time, I really do enjoy using the Blackmagic camera. So of course, like I said before, the size of the camera is a big difference and the smaller form factor and mounting points and all that kind of stuff makes this a lot more flexible and versatile for putting it in different situations, putting it on gimbals, different rigs. You can rig this out if you want to, or you can keep it really small. You can vlog with it. You can use it for content creation. This camera is a lot more challenging because of the form factor and the design of the camera. But again, all this stuff is personal preference. In terms of memory cards and storage, the 6K full frame has one memory card, which is a CF Express Type B card. CF Express B is my favorite type of memory card and is very reliable, but it only has one, and I think that's a downside for some people. Now, the Blackmagic can also record to an SSD, which is really handy, and it's what I'm doing right now. I'm filming on my 6K G2 and recording on an SSD, but the CF Express Type uh, B cards have gotten significantly cheaper, and so if you can, I'd, I'd prefer to shoot internally in this camera. Now, the FX3 has Sony's dual, dual card slots, so you have CF Express Type A, and SD, you can put those in both slots. So you have a lot of different options there, a little bit more flexibility, but I prefer to have CF Express B because they're, the price is coming down and they're pretty reliable, a lot more reliable than SD cards in my opinion. Lastly, let's get on to pricing and my recommendations if you're trying to decide between these two cameras. So at the time of recording this, the Blackmagic 6K full frame is selling for 2,600 and the FX3 is selling for 3,900, which is the same price it launched at. Also, the Blackmagic comes with the DaVinci Resolve Studio License, which if you buy separately is $300. So if you don't have that and you're looking to pick that up, then that's another $300 savings. So that brings sort of the cost down to that. Now, I get a lot of questions about, should I buy this camera or that camera? And often people are trying to compare cameras that are either have similar specifications or capabilities or maybe similar price. Now, these cameras, I think, are just for completely different users. Now, to me, the Blackmagic is definitely more of a cinema camera. And I know the FX3 is branded that way, but I think the big pluses with the Blackmagic is the amazing image quality, which the FX3 has great image quality too, but you get that flexibility of the internal B-RAW and you have all those video focused things, like I said, in terms of shutter angle and exposure tools and false color, which the FX3 doesn't have and this is labeled a cinema camera. So those are the big advantages. And I think for a lot of people, especially if you have a DaVinci Resolve workflow, B-RAW is really, really nice to use. Now, the FX3 to me is a much more versatile camera because the fact that it has great autofocus, stabilization, has a flip screen, you have more lens options, it's a smaller form factor. You can use it for filmmaking, videography, and content creation really easily. And I made a long-term review of the FX3 if you'd like to see more about that, I'll leave that video linked down below. Although you can film yourself with the Blackmagic camera, and I did take this out for a little short vlog when I did my first impressions video, but I really wouldn't recommend it for vlogging because you can't see yourself and it doesn't have autofocus. So it was very interesting for me to test out the Blackmagic camera and see how it compares with the FX3. I was really curious about how they performed uh, one against each other. So if you enjoyed this, please consider hitting subscribe. It'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.